going to try to keep this at around 10 minutes. Um, because mainly I have shit to do and I would like to be able to do that. Um, but basically, uh, <laughs> Biden is yet again proving, uh, that he was the big pharma president all along. So, I saw this, uh, news floating around, and I was like, yeah, that checks out. You know, but also, I wanted to compare it to some other shit, just to keep everything in perspective, right? Um, and I wanted to make sure to, like, get as much of this info out there as possible. Um... So I'm going to make this, you know, as uh, concise as possible. Just, you know, going to try to keep it as close to 10 minutes as possible. But basically, the Biden administration rescinds the Trump administration's insulin pricing rule. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, li it'd be like that, don't it? So... Just to be super clear here, um, I'm not Team Trump when I say any of this. Anybody who is new to this channel um, should check my other videos here because I'm against all presidents and all governments. And rightly so, for reasons I will go over a little later. But ultimately... Um, this is fucking just another example, right, of what it looks like when big pharma is more important than human lives. So, basically, what we're dealing with here is a gradual increase in the price, way, way outpacing, like, the necessary sort of increase in pricing over the same years. So here's an article. Yes, it's from Time. Fuck Time magazine. But this is true information, so... Over the past 60 years, the list price of a vial of insulin has gone from almost 75 cents to $250. An increase nearly 43 times the rate of U.S. consumer price index inflation which is a bougie way of saying what I already said like a moment ago. Um, quote, high drug costs exist throughout the system, but insulin is the poster child of this broken marketplace, says Representative Tom Reed, Republican of, of New York, one of the chairs of the Congressional Diabetes Caucus. There would be a lot less need for a diabetes caucus, if it was allowed to be public domain and generic and not IP hawked uh, because, you know, fucking they protect big pharma mega corporations uh, at the expense of human lives. Uh, and if those, you know, mega corporations weren't brought to you by Pfizer, ing, every single fucking thing that they could get their grubby little paws on. Um, you know, but this is this is information. You can find it at uh, at fucking uh, the price of insulin is soared. These biohackers have a plan to fix it. I don't care about the biohackers. I really don't, um, because ultimately we need uh, <laughs> we need a society that doesn't rely on IP in order to uh, get things. IP is the enemy of uh, humanity in uh, many regards, some of which I will go over a little later. But basically, this is a good article on the subject. You can go there for it. Uh, additionally, very recently, there's another article about how um, the Senate uh, passed this budget package, and part of it could have been uh, that insulin would be capped at $35 per vial. Um, now, you know, I'm not big on government intervention because I hate government. 
but these mega corporations relied on government to get their monopoly to begin with and they will continue to use government after this is blocked so fuck them play statist games win statist prizes you can get regulated down to 35 dollars a vial it's still too much it's still gouging and it would still be less if people were allowed to make generic versions from the public domain like you know you can buy fucking five dollars of ibuprofen at the store um but that's uh that's 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 too that's too much you know we can't we can't just let people be free that would solve too many problems that they profit from and get power off of so basically yeah they they, they did that <laughs> right um and then uh fucking biden is over here uh like after that after fucking just to drive the nail in a little bit harder the biden administration rescinds the trump administration insulin pricing rule so trump made a rule um a series of rules actually and um the Biden administration said, no, you can raise it if you want. So, uh, on a December 23rd, 2020, the Trump administration finalized a rule that directed the Department of Health and Human Services to take action to require that federally qualified health centers make insulin and injectable epinephrine available to certain patients at 340B prices. The Biden administration delayed the rule twice before it became effective on July 20th, 2021. And the first opportunity for HHS to impose the requirements of the rule would have been through grants awarded in fiscal year 2022. So while the rule has been in effect since July, it is yet to be implemented. In the Federal Register uh, notice rescinding the rule, HHS noted that the rule would have resulted in excessive administrative costs and burdens on health centers. Specifically, the agency took issue with the requirement that health centers would need to create and maintain new practices to determine patients' eligibility to receive drugs at or below the discounted price paid by the health center, plus a minimal fee. Minimal fee! HHS also noted its belief that the implementation of the rule would have resulted in reduced resources available to support critical services to health center patients, including those who use insulin and injectable epinephrine. So basically, they were profiting too much, and because they were profiting too much, they could scrape it off the top and fund other shit. Two thumbs down on that bullshit lie. Fuck you on that bullshit lie. Holy fucking shit, dude. It's so infuriating. I don't have diabetes, but I know people who do. I don't want them to die early because mega corporations, hospitals, and the Department of Health and Human Services are all colluding to regulatory capture people into a fucking hole. God damn, motherfuck these people. Um, and and <laughs> HHS further acknowledged concerns expressed by the vast majority of commenters. Which commenters? I didn't comment. It's like when they say, you know, 95% of Americans. Which Americans? I wasn't surveyed. Oh, but you don't understand sample sizes, and you don't understand methodology. Uh, I, I do understand both of those things, and it doesn't make these generalizations any less stupid. Is, and, and in this case, insidious. Because they can just claim, yeah, we're right because people agree with us. Fuck you and the vast majority of anything. Mob rules shouldn't dictate jack fucking shit, bitch. All right, so, um, <laughs> by the vast majority of consumers, the low-income definition of 350% of the federal poverty level 
would have created significant administrative challenges for health centers, and that those challenges would have resulted in a diversion of resources from patient care in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's endemic, you cunt! Everybody's gonna get it. Whether or not you've gotten the little uh, syringe wrench, you have, you will get it. Because that's what endemic means. And because it was never going to be stopped by this. Like, just like Gates and Fauci are now admitting. And we'll get to Gates a little later, too. But basically, yeah. We make too much money off this shit. Motherfucker, think you're gonna come in on our turf? I don't think so. That's what it really is. It's not about all this flowery language and nerd talk. It's they were making too much goddamn money and they want to stop the racket. That's why Shkreli did what he did. Everybody acts like he's some sort of exclusively evil being. But no, they're all in on this normal racket normally. And the fact that Shkreli did that was well in line with what everybody else did. He's a piece of shit. Just like all of them that are involved in decisions like this. Including bitch-ass little Biden. Who, just to be fucking clear, Jacobin Magazine, a socialist magazine, before some loser accuses me of right-wing talking points or the like, um, Jacobin Magazine says that Joe Biden's lobbyists are helping big pharma profiteers. The pharmaceutical industry wants Americans to continue paying far more for medicines than people in any other country to protect their tremendous profits. And one of Joe Biden's top campaign consulting firms is helping them. Hmm. President Joe Biden's top media buying firm is helping Big Pharma's efforts to kill his party's watered-down drug pricing legislation and targeting Senate Democrats up for re-election this year. It's the latest reminder that for the Beltway consultant class, money is far more important than ideology. Yeah. A top Democratic Party media buying firm, Canal Partners Media, is placing ads for drug industry front groups that want to block Democrats from lowering drug prices as promised in the Biden reconciliation bill. One group argues that Democrats are putting rare disease patients at risk and is targeting several incumbent Democrats and senators, or sorry, and is targeting several incumbent Democrat senators by name. The other says Democrats are harming drug companies' ability to respond to pandemics like COVID-19. Sound fucking familiar? Like maybe exactly what Hiss <laughs> was saying in the other piece? It's all the same shit. All the same shit. Big Pharma for big profits and Biden's in their pocket. And why? Ooh, why? Well, maybe we should look at some, you know, articles that came out ooh, around election time and Guess who the pharma industry is supporting for president? It's fucking Biden! And, and, (laughs) and, you know, I just had to, you know? I had to bring this up. Because, let's be super clear, I don't like Trump. But to ignore that they're all basically on the same team is fucking bullshit. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm really hammering this down. And, and, you know, Bill Gates, he did the same thing. You shouldn't be in the same boat, on the same page as Bill fucking Gates on anything unless you're a globalist, elitist monster, which is what Biden is. And uh, that's why Biden... Uh, is on the same page as Bill Gates in keeping things away from generics and, uh, yeah, keeping people unhealthy, theoretically, 
uh, unless they're willing to cough it up. Unless they're willing to get on the spit roast. Like, if you think Biden qualifies as a liberatory leftist, if you think that's what he is, or if you think he's a leftist at all when he instated mandatory minimums, you know, um, created the crime bill and the Patriot Act, and now suddenly he wants his fucking son off the hook. So he's like, yeah, maybe I made mistakes in those laws. Maybe that's why some black people didn't vote for you, Joe. It wasn't because they weren't black. It's because you weren't good for them. And keep in mind, I don't think Trump is either, just to be clear. But, fucking really? This is where we are? Like, if you look at this. Um, <laughs> similar goals, different strategies. Um, both Biden and Trump have promised to slash drug prices. Biden lied! two years later, but have dramatically different strategies for accomplishing that ob uh, objective. Trump, who campaigned in 2016 on the promise of lower drug costs, favors accelerating approvals for generic drugs while also pressuring pharmaceutical companies to lower Medicare pricing. Biden, conversely, has been calling for allowing Medicare to negotiate discounted drug prices. Hey, Biden, are you sure about that? So, just to be super fucking clear, uh, Biden sucks wet asshole. And if you support uh, medical uh, liberation or any sort of thing like that, if you support the poor, if you support the proletariat, you can't support Biden. I, 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 I can't stress it enough that anybody who thinks that you can support any sort of leftism in a liberatory sense and not an authoritarian sense um, can't support Biden. And ultimately, Biden just is a Republican. Remember when, like, people were saying that he should primary Trump as a Republican? So that Democrats who were less Republican-y uh, would get to run. <laughs> Almost like he was just a Republican. And just like the duopoly has created a monopoly on what's acceptable in terms of political choices. And, and just to be clear, it's like this all the time. Like... Just to bring it back up, because I talk about it a lot, but I don't show sources, Trump revoked Obama's rule on reporting drone strike deaths. This is from the BBC, right? President jo Donald Trump has revoked a policy set by his predecessor, that would be Obama, the drone king, mind you. And fuck that piece of shit, too. Because he droned so many people that he got comfortable enough using it as a joke at the White House Correspondents' Dinner against the Jonas Brothers. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't like them either. But presidents shouldn't be able to threaten to kill people. Uh, fucking, unless we live in a fascist dictatorship, which we fucking do. But, like, at least maintain the image of the lie. Oh, wait, you don't have to because you can just do shit like this and get away with it, right? So, Trump uh, rescinded th these, these reporting mandates, uh, right? And, and that meant he got to get away with a lot more drone strikes, which is something his supporters won't like hearing me say, but I figured I would say it in this video anyway. But basically, the rules uh, were that you reported how many uh, drone strikes you did, um... And that <laughs> you, uh, you like have to do it against specific targets, uh, that are really highly dangerous, right? That sort of thing, you know? 
And because he did that, because he did that, um, he could form his new secret rules. And he could form, like, this gigantic list of secret rules. This is from the ACLU. You can read this. I'm not going to because it's, you know, too long and I'm already well over 10 minutes. But Trump's secret rules for drone strikes and president's unchecked license to kill. Because keep in mind, Obama had a kill list. Trump probably had a, has a kill list. And Biden definitely has a kill list because the, the guy who takes credit for authoring the Patriot Act has a fucking kill list. 100% if these other people do. So yeah, like ultimately, that's the way things are. And under Trump, it got much fucking worse. Much fucking worse. Uh, but he didn't have to say how much worse it got. <laughs> you know? So just to be super specific, fuck Trump too. But you know what? Biden didn't reinstate that rule, did he? He could have, but he didn't. And I wonder why Biden wouldn't reinstate that rule. Maybe so that he could get away with droning a lot more people than that uh, Al-Qaeda guy and get away with it. Almost like what I was saying way back in 2021. That uh, the problem is set points. There's a new baseline of control every moment. And sometimes they increase the level of control to intentionally insane levels. So people will cry out for the previous level of control. The trick is to say no to all of their control and accept none. Almost like the control is the problem to begin with. And the control doesn't improve in terms of problematism just because you get a new guy in control. Did I say that? Maybe voting won't solve jack fucking shit. Maybe, maybe the problem is the state exactly. And it doesn't matter who runs it. And maybe the state is running us all toward an eventual apocalypse. A bloody and brutal Armageddon of rivers of blood and years of darkness, the likes of which will make Revelation look like a children's story. Something I've said a lot? Oh, and definitely don't look into the fact that the U.S. basically made both Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. And definitely don't read my articles on Afghanistan that will be linked in uh, the description to figure out that maybe that's not over either. Shucks. Darn it. I did it again. I gave you uh, about 25 minutes of <sighs> just a bummer. A real bummer. Because somehow, reality isn't fun. And it's not good. Um, and anybody who thinks that Biden was on their side, was either on the wrong side or naive. You know, people, some, anyway, regretted voting for Trump. Isn't it time people started stepping out and saying they regret voting for Biden en masse, too? Because every single thing he promised in a benevolent fashion... He's fucking lied about! And maybe we shouldn't be supporting a massive liar and hypocrite doing evil shit constantly that will result in evil people winning constantly and proletariat dying constantly. Maybe the problem is the state to begin with. And it's not going to get better if you have a Republican, or a Republican who wears blue. Because they're all on the same fucking team. And they all fundamentally do the same fucking things. Which is why they can constantly rescind each other's rules, and then quietly create 
uh, other rules and just constantly ratchet up their ability to control us because they don't really care about us and they never fucking have. Brought to you by Pfizer. Which is why we need to smash the fucking state.